Thank you for watching today's video. I want to take the time right now to not only thank and welcome our sponsorship for today's video, which is Origin PC, but I really want to say thank you to them because this is going to be an ongoing partnership for the foreseeable future, and I'm so honored and humbled to work with these guys. I love their products. I actually own a bunch of Origin PC stuff, so to be able to co collaborate with them going forward in a personal way is super exciting. And one of the things we talked about in the launch of this relationship was we wanted to give away a laptop to you guys in the community who watch and support my content. So with that said, this is the Eon 15X gaming laptop from Origin PC. The Eon 15X AMD gaming laptop provided by Origin PC is a gaming laptop rivaling desktop gaming rigs while also being portable for on the go gaming. Now I know that is a very big bold statement to make, but Origin PC can back that claim up with the Eon 15X's 12 core AMD Ryzen 9 3900 desktop processor. It's got an 8 gig Nvidia GeForce RTX 2070 graphics card, all displayed on a glorious 15 inch 144 hertz 1080p narrow bezel display. Beyond what's under the hood, the Origin PC Eon 15X is stylish as hell with a customizable RGB full keyboard board set up with incredible lighting and effects. And of course, this piece of a laptop can also handle all of your input and output needs, complete with HDMI output, two USB 3.2 Gen Type 2A ports, and an Ethernet port, of course. Simply put, this laptop is not messing around. So if you guys want to get a chance to win this awesome laptop, click the links in the description box down below. Support our friends over at Origin PC by giving them a follow for cool giveaways and news updates for all their awesome products. And at the very least, Origin PC, Thank you for supporting the TOBG community, and I'm so honored to be working with you guys. Back to the show. Ah, the Game Boy Advance. A monumental step forward for Nintendo in the handheld market. This little guy, codenamed Project Atlantis, flipped the script and the system going from a vertical to a horizontal design that was flashy and slick and had a boatload of strong titles throughout its life cycle. And while I could make a whole top 10 just about all the incredible faceplate designs of the Game Boy Advance Micro, we're gonna focus on the thing that made the GBA a must-have, the games. But let's put the slightest of twists on this list. While I could easily fill this entire list with Mario Advance 1, 2, 3, and 4, which, guys, the naming conventions here just make no sense at this point. 2 is 1, 4 is 3. What sort of wacky equation is that about? Ugh. So with all that said, what I'm trying to get at is I am striking all Game Boy Advance remakes from qualifying on this list. So sorry, Metroid Zero Mission and Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. You were counted out before things even began. So with that, let's get started. Welcome to my top 10 best Game Boy Advance games of all time, excluding remakes. Number 10. The Game Boy Advance saw a lot of incredible mascots thrive, but one mascot I don't think anyone expected to see arrive quite as quickly as he did was the Blue Blur himself. That's right, Sonic Advance hit the GBA not even a year into its life cycle. This was the first time that a Nintendo kid could properly experience a 2D Sonic game on a Nintendo handheld, and let me say, it was magical. Sonic Advance offered something of a classic Genesis experience, with pretty impressive sprite work and more modern sensibilities in its gameplay. Sonic had now gone through two 3D adventures, and elements like grind rails and such were now an expected part of the Sonic experience. Players could choose from Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and even Amy Rose to traverse the sprawling worlds, encountering the expected rings, loops, and traps along the way. To that point though, those traps are what trips this game up a bit in my book, and why this game isn't higher on my list. There are just a handful of design choices, particularly near the end of the game, that are rather baffling for me, making things feel more cruel than clever. The music is also just all right for me, which is almost more of a sin of a Sonic game than any design flaw. I want to be able to go fast and rock out while doing so. Is that too much to ask? But in the same breath, is it fair that I'm comparing Sonic Advance's tinny tunes to the godliness of many Sonic tracks that came before and after it? Probably not. But with all that said, Sonic Advance is certainly a game I plan to eventually complete on the show, and maybe even its subsequent sequels. Number 9 
You gotta love Wario. He puts the wah in wonderful. And the GBA was certainly good to this greedy dude, giving him not only Super Wario Land 4, but a complete rebrand of his character with WarioWare Inc. and Mega Micro Games. You see, in the WarioWare universe, Wario decides to try his hand at game design and enlists all of his friends to make it rich as a game designer. And everything about this first entry in the series is incredible. The zaniness, the characters, the beats that drive you forward. This game oozes intensity, but in the most playful way, throwing quick commands and requiring lightning fast reflexes with immediate success or failure animations. But even when screwing up, you're sure to laugh more than fume. The simple notion of these micro games are so easy to process that WarioWare is the perfect experience for a handheld. And the variety of new characters and themes color the gameplay with the proper amount of zest and style. You get groovy with Jimmy T, go retro with 9V, and beyond the character options, Micro Mega Games offers a healthy amount of unlockables, allowing for a more concentrated or competitive experience with games like Skating Board versus Chicken Race and both Puros. WarioWare came out the gate with so much gusto, it's remarkable. It was the building block for Twisted, Touched, and so many more entries, even being celebrated with multiple stages in Smash Bros, making it an absolute pillar of any Game Boy Advance library. Number eight. The last Metroid game came out in 94. The fans had been waiting. And then 2002 came along. Metroid skipped a full console and handheld cycle and then shook us to our very cores. Not only did we get Metroid Prime, an absolute slam dunk of evolving the Metroid franchise on the Nintendo GameCube, but Metroid Fusion hit shelves alongside it, continuing the story of Super Metroid. It was a glorious day to be a fan of Samus. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I am aware of the criticisms that come along with Fusion, and when I first played it on Beard Bros, I felt similarly. I know that many people slight Metro Fusion for its moments of handholding, linearity, and a lot of story points, with Samus actually talking to characters. But most of these notions are actually quite inflated, and there is no denying that Fusion is a Metroid game beyond its familiar trappings. Yet, Metroid Fusion is also willing to experiment and grow, which seems fitting considering the title. While the controls are as tight as ever, new additions like the ability to wall climb and grab ledges grant Samus a whole new kit of movement and traversal Universal options. And the SAX and several bosses honestly make the game feel more like a horror game at times. Fusion does an exceptional job of undercutting what the player believes they know. What starts as following directions slowly devolves with parts of the space station being destroyed and opens up into a much more exploratory experience that makes you feel like you're almost cheating at times. But where you're headed is exactly where the game intends for you to go to progress. And that is really clever. And the proper return to form of a series that we all feared was doomed to stay dormant. Number seven. It's no secret that I'm a huge fan of Super Mario RPG. My childhood was, in many ways, shaped by that game. Over the last few years, I've experienced the other RPGs that my main man Mario took part in with things like the Paper Mario series, and they have been a joy to complete. Yes, even Color Splash was fun for me. However, the Mario and Luigi series, and in particular the OG Superstar Saga, is the closest a game has come to making me relive those awesome Super Mario RPG glory days. Superstar Saga blends a turn-based combat style with active ingredients to craft battles that kept me constantly engaged. I loved having to mix using either a jump or hammer depending on the situation. And on top of that, each brother was controlled by a specific button. It made Mario and Luigi feel unique and added another layer to that game. Since there were two separate brothers, I was able to combine them to traverse the world in really cool ways. Flattening Luigi so that Mario can ride him as a surfboard? Count me way in! The series also introduced new iconic carriers like Fawful, the flying beanish character who is definitely not a falafel. It also injected some much needed character into some of the Mario series mainstays. We dive deep into the woes of Luigi and realize that Bowser is far more bumbling than we ever imagined. Add in incredibly charming visuals and music that blend the iconic tracks with instant new classics, and Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga is the perfect start to a new series. Number six. 
The Legend of Zelda games on handheld systems have always offered worthwhile journeys in my eyes. Starting with Link's Awakening, they have continued to grow and improve throughout the years. And one of my new low-key favorites has got to be The Legend of Zelda Minish Cap. The graphics are some of the most striking and beautiful to grace the GBA screens. They're as if The Wind Waker and A Link to the Past had come together to create something new and exciting. All the new characters such as Vati and the Minish have become beloved characters in the franchise. It was honestly refreshing battling against the villain not named Ganon or Ganondorf. The game also introduced some of my favorite items in the Zelda universe. The Gust Jar made for some interesting traversal opportunities, and was surprisingly fun to use in combat. While the Mole Mates allowed me to dig around faster than Hector Zeroni, Minish Cap also introduced Kinstones! They were fine. The Minish Cap may not be universally known or beloved as games like Ocarina of Time and Breath of the Wild, but this pocket-sized Capcom-developed adventure packs just as much of a good time as any other heavy hitter in the series. Number five. RPGs can be a difficult genre to tackle on handheld systems. When I think of gaming on the go, I don't generally imagine playing through a 50-hour-plus game. Well, nowadays I do, but not when the GBA came out. Luckily, Golden Sun provides a basic RPG experience that works perfectly on the Game Boy Advance. I'm not saying that Golden Sun is boring or so easy that you don't even have to look at the screen. Rather, the game introduces standard RPG elements while adding just enough new mechanics to make veterans stick around. The Jin system is honestly a really clever way of increasing stats and making new spells for the characters to use. More so, the fact that the magic you learn is used not just in battle but throughout the world to help you solve puzzles and explore is a stroke of genius. Golden Sun also has a decent amount to keep you invested after the main game is complete. From a completion standpoint, this game certainly gives you plenty of bang for your buck. The Crossbone Isle is a challenging endgame area with puzzles that require you to have learned most of the spells in the game. Even the grinding for different magic spells felt fun since I always had a goal in front of me. It took me a while to play this game, but I fully understand where the hype comes from. I'd be 100% down to see the series further explored. Whether that be through a brand new game like Golden Sun 3, or even just letting Isaac become a full-fledged character in Smash. I know he's an assist trophy, but if the Waluigi dream hasn't died yet, Neither should Isaacs. Number four. Now I've played my fair share of Mega Man games. I enjoy the original Mega Man games, but the Mega Man X series has always been where my heart lies. The Game Boy Advance allowed the series to extend even further. In particular, Mega Man Zero was born as a successor to the X series. This game finally gave Zero a chance to star in his own series, and much like Zero, this game was darker, grittier, and much, much harder. Honestly, this game feels like a direct sequel to Mega Man X3. The art style and gameplay has much more in common with the original trilogy than any X game that came after it, and Mega Man Zero utilizes the GBA perfectly. In addition to a standard jump and shoot, or jump and slash gameplay that the series is known for, Mega Man Zero introduced some new RPG-like mechanics. You can level up Zero Z Saber with new mechanics like a double slash or a rolling air slash. The game also introduced something called Cyber Elves, which would provide different buffs to Zero and help keep gameplay feeling fresh throughout the entire adventure. Honestly, I've been wanting to complete this game for a long time now, and with the recent collection re-release, it seems like the perfect time. The game is just so flippin' hard. If I mess up one mission, there's no going back. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. If I could complete this game, it'd be huge plays. Number three. Speaking of games I've been meaning to do on the show, it is no surprise to anyone that I love me some Metroidvania. We've already tackled the Metroid half of that name earlier on this list, and now we're looking at Castlevania Aria of Sorrow. Aria of Sorrow took the awesome game feel from Symphony of the Night and added something called the Soul System. Every creature you killed had the chance to drop its soul. These would provide you with a secondary attack, a transformation, a passive buff, or some other cool way to interact with the world. The Soul System makes every playthrough of this game feel unique since some of the drops are pretty dang rare. I also like that we got to experience yet another new protagonist in the series. Sure, Soma doesn't have the swagger of the Belmont or the raw sex appeal of Alucard, but he... Well, he's got an awesome white coat. 
All joking aside, Soma is a pretty cool character and I actually became pretty invested in his story. And he isn't even the only interesting character. The game foregoes the series mainstays and brings in a plethora of new cast members to interact with and enjoy. This spot could have easily gone to almost any Game Boy Advance Castlevania game. They all continued the tradition of solid exploration and cool upgrades, but Aria of Sorrow barely beat out the competition due to its overall polish and addicting soul collection. You gotta have soul. Number two. Pokemon is an ever-growing mass of monsters that becomes increasingly tricky to tackle for me on the show. I need to have the future sight to not faint at the sheer force and pressure of it all. And now that I've exhausted some obligatory Pokemon wordplay, let's just get into how great Pokemon Sapphire, Ruby, and Emerald truly are. While the narrative may be largely familiar at the outset, elements like both Team Aqua and Magma, especially in Pokemon Emerald, really change up the player experience, and having the legendary Pokemon more directly involved in the plot was a major shakeup for the franchise at the time. The Hoenn region is brimming over with colorful personality and areas, and an overwhelming abundance of French horns, as you trek across routes to encounter new Pokemon and show your dominance over other trainers. This was also the point in the series that natures, abilities, and double battles were introduced, which made the overall Pokemon meta that much deeper, especially for competitive play. And of course, there are the Pokemon themselves. From the incredible starters to the vast array of legendaries, Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald boast a variety of appealing pokes. Personally, I'm a huge fan of my main boy, Sceptile, from when I played through Emerald. He helped me rock through the battle frontier, which presented tons of unique ways to combat these monsters against one another in spectacular fashion. While there are certainly some rough edges, these gems shine brightly for what the Pokemon franchise could and would continue to do. Number one. Oftentimes when I make these top 10 lists, my friends in the office will disagree with some of my choices. I've played a lot of games in my day and I have a lot of opinions that may not line up with everyone else's lists. However, the number one game on this list was never in doubt. I love this game. Literally everyone in the office loves this game. My number one Game Boy Advance game of all time is Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. All right, look, so I love Final Fantasy and all, but chances are I'm going to get all these names wrong. So general disclaimer, as you all know, I am awful at names, so here we go. Final Fantasy Tactics Advance takes everything that I love from the original Final Fantasy Tactics and amplifies it a ton. The story in this game follows a young boy named Marsh who is transported from the real world into a world of magic and adventure. And that is exactly how this game makes me feel. This game introduced us to Virus and Bongus, as well as bringing back the classics like Moogles and Chocobos. The tactical combat to this day is some of the best I've ever played, and this is helped by a job system that is fully fleshed out. Every job has its purpose, and with practice, can become a menace on the battlefield. From archers to red mages, all the way to geomancers, this game provides hours upon hours of joy in grinding out new and better skills to deploy. Final Fantasy Tactics Advance provides what feels like endless missions to complete and gear to acquire. I spent dozens of hours just messing around in the game trying to get special weapons, and while most games would feel tedious with grinding, this game makes every encounter feel fresh and new, so that I never felt bored. I can honestly go on and on about how amazing this game is, like how this world was so amazing that they revisited it in Final Fantasy XII, or how it feels never-ending with the job system and bonus content. But I think I'll save the rest for when I finally do a full completionist episode on this fantastic game. So that was my top 10 Game Boy Advance games. Let me know what your guys' are in the comments down below, and hey, a big thank you to our sponsors, Origin PC, our brand new partnership. Guys, let me give you a laptop. If you want to win this awesome gaming laptop, click the links in the description boxes down below. Follow all the socials and all that fun stuff. This is a wonderful partnership that is just beginning. More things to give away coming soon in the future. Guys, I've been Gerard the Completionist, and I'll see you all next time.